to bobinate or not to bobinate? That is the question we'll be answering in today's video during a comparison of four different thread storage solutions. We'll be talking about keeping track of your threads, easy getting up, and some pros and cons to most common ways of keeping your thread storage. Hi, my name is Marie and this is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about cross stitching, so remember to like and subscribe if you've learned something new today. Remember to also follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more stitchy inspiration. This video is third in the How to Get Up Your Own project series and is all about efficient thread storage. So if you're on the lookout for a new way of storing your threads or are just keen on picking up some tips, you're in the right place. I will take you through the journey of my evolving thread storage because I've tried it all and give you my honest opinion on pros and cons of four most common ways of storing your thread. Let's get organized. Option number one is to leave threads on skeins and store in one place in no particular order. I have started like this, not having any dividers at first, just a pile of threads in a box, bag or a drawer. Needless to say, this is not very efficient and there are a lot more cons than pros to this method. I use this method now actually for my spare stash, that is duplicate, triplicate and in some cases quadruplicate threads. I'll tell you how that happened in a second. I have divided the threads into groups, so hundreds, two hundreds, three hundreds, three eight hundreds together, etc. Leaving white and black out for easy access. Pros of this method, it doesn't take any time at all, or a very little time if you do group the threads. That's about it really, so let's look at cons. Unless you keep a very good track of what you have in the thread pile, uh, you can potentially order thread twice or more if you overlook you have it already. That's exactly how I ended up with four of the same threads, so obviously I wasn't too good at keeping track in the beginning. This can get unnecessarily expensive when you're buying surplus of threads you don't really need. Finding the thread you need can be very time consuming. In order to find your desired skein, you need to go through a bunch of threads because it's impossible to keep them in numerical order. Also, once you've partially used the skein and have leftover thread you'd like to store after you finish your project, you have nowhere to store it with the skeins. Let's look at method number two, floss away bags. The system is easy. You keep your threads in small plastic bags, most often on rings. That way you can keep them in numerical order and it's easy to find your desired thread or find out there's one missing. You can store the thread already pre-cut on a floss drop or still on skeins. You can buy floss away bags in pre-made sets or, as I have done, buy ring binders and plastic bags on Amazon and just punch a hole in one of the corners. Easy. Pros of these methods are you can keep the threads in numerical order grouped on a binder ring, so finding the thread you need is really easy. It doesn't take that much time to do this compared to bobinating, and you can easily add any leftover thread from a project back in the bag, ready to be picked up when needed. Cons? Well, having all 500 DMCs stored like this can get seriously bulky, so you might need to dedicate a big box or a drawer for your thread stash. And this is really just my personal opinion. I am a very visual person and I don't like that I can't see what I have or don't have without actually going through the individual floss away bags. These are the reasons I personally moved away from floss away bags, but a lot of people can make them work. Method number three, storing threads on floss drops or Annie's Keepers. This method stores already pre-cut thread on floss drops or Annie's Keepers. This is a very popular way of storing threads. You'd put threads on floss drops, usually in a numerical order, and keep them grouped on a floss ring. 
any skippers are acrylic floss drops that fit into a whole storage system that makes thread really easily accessible. Pros of this method are so many. Threads are organized, really easy to access, easy to see whether you're missing the thread you need, simply a really good way to store your thread. Con is really just my personal preference and that's storage requirement being a long cabinet to hang your threads in or hanging them on a pegboard which is exposing them to dust and sunshine. And second, the ends of the threads can get tangled and fray over time if handled often. These are my personal reasons why I don't prefer this time for long-term storage. However, I do keep the amount of threads I need for a project I'm working on floss drops. That brings us to last but not least, storing threads on bobbins. Either much loved or much hated, bobbinating is still a highly popular method of storing threads. I personally do store my threads on bobbins, but I have an amazing hack that makes it, in my opinion, the best thread storage there is. Traditionally, you would wind the whole length of a skein, that is 8 meters, on the bobbin, and when you want to use the thread, you'd unwind a bit of the thread, cut it, use it, and wind it back again. I initially abandoned bobbins because I really didn't like this at all and found it very impractical. The way I bobbinate now is honestly a complete game changer and I learned it from the wonderful floss tuber Laura Gerr to the moon and back. Thank you so much, Laura. I cut the skein into eight lengths, so they measure one meter each, just like I would if I was putting these on floss drops. Then I take two lengths at a time and wind it on my pip and chip bobbins and then another two and then another two until I'm finished. When it's time to kit up a project, I go and take only the two pre-cut lengths, put it on my project floss drop and put the bobbin back on its place. This hack, in combination with using the color-coded pip and chip bobbins, have made kitting up so easy for me. I'm literally ready to start a project in less than five minutes when I have all the threads I need. I can also see any missing colors at a first glance, which makes placing a thread order an absolute breeze. Also, after I've finished a project and have a leftover thread, I'll just wind it back on the bobbin and store for future use. Pros of this method? Well, it is easy to store and very visual in terms of seeing which DMCs you have. And when using the pre-cut thread and the numerical order of storing bobbins, it is really so quick and easy to kit up and to see what threads are missing that I personally consider it the best thread storage system there is, despite its cons, which are undoubtedly the time-consuming nature of this thread storage. I don't enjoy bobbinating, it takes a long time, however I do it because it saves me a lot of time further down the line. Using the pip and chip bobbins is also not a cheap solution. The whole set currently costs £165, so together with the cost of the whole set of DMC threads that can set you back anywhere around £400, it can get very pricey and it is something I've personally built over the span of two years and I still don't have all the colors. The good thing is though, you could use just plastic bobbins in an inexpensive plastic holder from Amazon. Just write the thread number on top of the bobbin and keep only a limited number of most often used colors. Two things I'd like to add. There is some ongoing discussion on whether to store your thread in a numerical order or by colorways, so reds together, blues together, etc. I would highly recommend to choose the numerical order. That is because when you try to find the correct number when storing your threads by color can be a very long process when your 37 something is next to 700s and 300s, for example. Storing the thread by colorways is generally more recommended for designers who are then picking the correct color for their design.
I promised I would briefly touch upon the ways of keeping track of your thread storage. There are generally three ways. Number one, proper old school, just how I like it, is on a paper. So you would just write down all the numbers of DMCs that are available on the market and next to it you would say that you've got three skeins or zero skeins or one skein so that next time you go compile your um, shopping list you know exactly whether you actually need that color or not. What I would recommend is to use the Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet so that you can access your spreadsheet on any device and especially in late night shopping somewhere with 10% discount, you can access your spreadsheet wherever you are and you can find out whether you actually need that skein or not. Or third option is via app. I will highlight just one of many. Threadstash is available on both Android and newly on iOS as well. And it allows you to keep track of all of your Threadstash, compile shopping lists, and it even includes a calculator of how long um, or how many skeins will you need uh, on a project based on how many stitches there are and um, what fabric count it is. So it is an extremely handy app. Um, I encourage you to check it out. So we've had four different ways of keeping threads and three different ways of keeping track of your thread stash. There is no absolute wrong or right way to do this though. Everybody is different, everybody has different preferences. So don't stress if your way is different as long as it works for you. I hope you found some inspiration in today's video or some tips to help you kit up more easily. I would however love to know, do you have any other tips or would you like to know anything you've seen today in more detail? Please do let us know in the comments below. And remember, if you don't want to keep hundreds of threads or different fabrics at home, you can always order a ready to go full kit on www.caterpillarcrossstage.com. If you are part of our newsletter, you will have seen that we have recently released two new fabulous designs, the Picnic Party and Sea Spray Cottage. The picnic party is released for a free picnic event happening on Sunday 17th of July in St Nicholas Park in Warwick, the most beautiful English historical setting one can wish for. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter aka VIP Stitch Club yet, please make sure you head over to the description below and sign up with your email address to immediately get access to eight free patterns, 10% discount on your first order, and you'll never miss any news from our Caterpillar Cross Stitch headquarters again. If you love the Cross Stitch community, you can head over to our Facebook group with almost 15,000 other stitches where you can share your progress, finishes, or any questions you might have. And that is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch today. I hope you have a fantastic week and see you next Monday.